Experienced genealogy researchers know how important it is to craft a source citation for all the evidence that we find that documents our ancestors. But when it comes to DNA evidence, many of us really want to pull our hair out. But today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges of creating DNA source citations and some solutions on creating those citations as well as some conclusions. As many of you know, it is important to create a source citation so you can always go back to the record that you found during your research. And there are lots of templates that can help you create the citations. And what's great about these citations is that if you want to go back to them, well, in this case, I could go back to Family Search, but if the record disappears from Family Search or it becomes no longer available from for home access, then I can actually go to the Fremont County, Idaho court records to look at that record. But with DNA evidence, there's too much volatility and change in the data sets that we're consulting. Algorithms change, processing change, features change. And not only that, people are adding and removing their DNA evidence to the places that we consulted frequently. And because of that, going back to this triangulation may be impossible in the future. And so what are we supposed to do? The other problem is with record research, we can find multiple birth records in a collection for a couple. And then we can craft citations for each of those record sets. But when it comes to DNA research, maybe we can. And I've seen some people put forth information that they could, but in many discussions Andy and I have had and we've had with a mother genetic genealogist, it's really, really hard to create a specific citation very similar to the ones you would have for each birth record. Not only that, we have to be aware that DNA can only predict so much. So let's say you have a match where you share 875 centimorgans. Well, you could rightly assume that that's the first cousin. However, if you go over to the shared match tool over on DNA Painter, you're going to realize that there are a lot of different relationships that that relative could be. And when I say it could be, we're talking sometimes it could be a 98% confidence it's any one of those relationships. The other limitation is DNA by itself cannot tell you if this person belongs to your father's side or your mother's side. You need other inputs in order to make that make sense. Whenever you've done a scientific experiment or read a scientific research paper that's been published in a journal, one of the key factors is that information has to be reproducible by other researchers for your conclusions to be able to stand. But in genetic genealogy, remember I talked about the volatility? It's also very difficult for other genetic researchers to reproduce the same research steps that you did. Part of it is accessibility. There's a lot of limitations. And so one day you can create a Watto tool and uh, what are the odds? You can create a leads method chart, you can create a cluster chart, but not everybody can have the same clusters and leads chart for themselves. And that's a good thing, but it also complicates the ability for someone else to reproduce your work. If you've made it this far in the video, some of you are going, why are you making this complicated? Why can't you just answer my question? Well, you needed to know the background before we can go forward. So how are we going to create a DNA source citation for something that's constantly changing and that somebody else might not be able to reproduce? Well, we often say it depends. If you're trying to create a source citation for an online tree, then I'm going to recommend you follow the advice that's in this article over on Wikitree. I have found this guidance to be very sound. So let me walk you through just a couple of sa uh, sample recommendations they have. So this citation is if you have a close relationship and you can see this and you can copy and paste it 
from that blog post that will be in our show notes over on familyhistoryfanatics.com. Become very familiar with our website. There's a lot of great resources and information there. So let's break this down. I have a close relationship. Now, I'm not going to tell you the person's name. You would substitute the person's name first cousin once removed. You'd actually put that person's name in. But to protect their privacy because they're living, I'm not going to share their name. But we start off with telling you what type of relationship, what company it was on, and who the matches were. I'd then go forth and tell you who the common ancestor is and how I'm related to that common ancestor and how my DNA match is related to that common ancestor. And then I wrap up with the predictability information that was found on the website that I used. You can reproduce this on every genetic genealogy website that has DNA shared matches. You just swap out the pertinent information and craft a citation. But recognize that I couldn't figure out that information of how I was connected to this person until I compared my tree to the other person's family tree. Ancestry initially, because I can't test my mother and father, they're both deceased, Ancestry couldn't tell me that this was a paternal ancestor. I had to utilize my cousin match, her tree, it was a her, <laughs> her tree, and compare it to my tree in order to figure it out. So there are some limitations in this citation, there's some assumptions behind them and you just need to be aware of it. Now the next citation that Wikitree recommends is one for when you're triangulating people together. So this involves you and two other people or a relative and two other people, but it's a triangle. So it involves three people and how they're related together. So in this case, I have my match and I match N. Coldwell and M. Townley. And I tell you exactly where we're um, related. We have share 18 centimorgans across on chromosome seven. That's the beauty of the MyHeritage chromosome browser. The most recent common ancestor, very similar to the previous one. There's this statement of who did the validation and what we used to do it. I found that one kind of interesting. I, I actually do like it. So you know who to talk to about this triangulation and what tool they used. And then you finally wrap up and tell us how A is related to B and A is related to C and how A, B and C are also related. So that's a pretty lengthy source citation, but good job folks over at Wikitree for coming up with this. I, I really found that to be wonderful. The only problem with those citations is what happens if you don't know how you're related to your DNA match. So I'm going to answer your question with a question. What do you do when you have records for unidentified persons? Well, if I find a baptismal record that has 10 different people being baptized in the San Gabriel Catholic Church in New Mexico, Unless I know how they're related to somebody, I don't even bother with that information. I mean, I could create a source citation, but unless they're part of a brick wall, unless I think they might be related somehow, I just let it be. So let's not create source citations for people we haven't figured out. Let's just leave them in our spreadsheets and on our DNA match list. And once we figured them out, and if we need to create a source citation, then we can go ahead and do that. The other problem with these two sample templates of source citations, what if your research is more complex? For instance, who is the father of my grandmother? That was actually very complex. Well, in that case, you're probably going to need to make a DNA research report. And in that report, then you can create source citations. Now, over in the show notes, over on FamilyHistoryFanatics.com, you'll find a link to this great article. I have to give kudos to Family Locket for talking about how to create a research project step-by-step step 
using DNA. And so let me just show you what I did based on their recommendations. So I started with my research objective, identify the father of Louise Long, born Marie Anderson, daughter of Agnes Anderson. And then I gave my background information. It sounds a lot like the research plans and the research reports we've talked about here on this channel. And be sure to go over to familyhistoryfanatics.com to pick up a template for the research plans and the research reports over on our resource page. The next thing I did was I began to talk about the body of my report. Because there are living individuals in this report, you're not gonna see their names, but a female DNA matched would actually be replaced with the match's name. However, we have a female who matched the daughters and a granddaughter of Louise. And then I go step by step telling you how she was connected. And then I need to make some citation. So for myself, matching that female DNA match, here's my citation, very similar to the ones recommended by Family Locket. We also have to create citations for when we don't match someone because the lack of a match can help to prove or disprove a theory as well. And notice I just changed the little end section. I say no DNA matches were shared. And so that is a negative match or a no match citation. Now, this is what I'm not entirely sure I like, but I included it in case you want to create such a citation. If you're going to cite DNA painter tools or a leads method chart or a cluster chart created by MyHeritage, this is something you can, the format you can use in order to create a source citation. Now, once you've finished creating your report, the most important thing is to make that report accessible. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna upload that conclusion report. Maybe you've figured out your third great grandfather that nobody's been able to figure out and you attach that, that grandfather to the family tree, privatize the names of the living people, and then upload that document to Ancestry, to Find My Past, to Wikitree, to Family Search, to all the things. Upload your report. And then you're gonna create this citation and you can use that as a source. So if you go to Family Search and you click on Sources, you can add a new source and then share this source citation and you're telling people where that report is. You can also say, hey, look in the memory section, I've uploaded it as a document. Those are what I would recommend in more complicated situations of your DNA evidence because you can't really do a, it, it would be too complicated to do some of the shorter citations. So create a report and cite that report in your online trees. Now out of respect for your time, I'm not gonna cover this topic, but I'm going to direct you to our blog over on familyhistoryfanatics.com because there was a wonderful discussion over on Reddit about source citations and which parts are necessary and which parts aren't. Andy and I talked about it and we came up with our own thoughts and we wrote them down in the blog post. So if you're interested, check the link in the description and then you can go read about that discussion. Now, I hope this answers many of your questions about creating citations for DNA evidence. If you have more questions, be sure to use the comment section below. Now, these are just the opinions of Andy and I considering a lot of the research we've done for clients, for training you guys how to do your research. I invite you to continue exploring the opinions and the recommendations of other genetic genealogists out there and make a decision for yourself. It's kind of like watching home improvement videos that Andy did when he was trying to tile our bathroom when we lived in Iowa. He watched a lot of different videos and each person had a point and then he utilized all of that information to decide how he was gonna do the tile and the bathroom was wonderful. I hated moving away from my princess bathroom. If you have more questions, 
about doing genetic genealogy research, be sure to use the comments section below. If you're ready to learn how to do more DNA research, check out the playlist above. And as always, this is our latest video. Now I'm running out of time 